cycles in the next month. So that would be the 19.6. So we're thinking about the 19.6. And then we're going to say that we're going to take 80% of that to be our cushion. So it's going to be 0.8. If we want to make that a percent, we can go up to the home tab. We can go to the alignment group and we can go to the percent. Therefore, we're going to say that we're going to equal the 19.6. Those are going to be the sales in the next month times the 80%. So that's how much we want to basically have on hand at the end of July that's still on hand after the sales of the 20,006. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to say, well, for August, we're going to say equals and take the September sales. We want to take next month's sales according to our rule times 80%. And we're going to say the 80% make that a percentage and multiply that out. So of the next month's projected times the 80%, we think we want, as of the end of August, 16,080 uh, units left over according to this, this policy. And then you might be going, well, what about uh, September? Because obviously our, our sales budget only goes up to September. And that's one of those areas where the, the problem's going to have to give you some more data in terms of, well, what do we think the, the budgeted sales are going to be for October, which is outside of, the, of our... Um, quarter that we're budgeting for but we need that if if this is the policy so we're gonna have to go down to our data and that's why it gives us this october number out here and we're gonna say twenty thousand six is what we think is october so we're gonna have to uh, multiply that times the point eight the ending balance number and we'll uh, take the percentage of that and then multiply that out so we got the twenty thousand six times the eighty percent and enter okay so now we've just entered some labels here so we have the ratio we have the budget ending inventory in units remember we're talking about units as opposed to dollars got to keep that in mind as we go through this and then we'll add this up so the required units of available production that's going to equal the budgeted units this is how many we think we're actually going to sell in july plus the cushion what we want left over in ending inventory so we're going to sell twenty thousand six, and we want 15 680 in the warehouse as of the end of july just in case we sell more and or to get us ready for August. So I'm going to hit tab. We're going to do the same thing. You could copy and paste the formula. However, I'm just going to calculate it a few times so we can see that calculation. So it's going to be the amount we're going to produce plus the amount that we want in ending inventory equals in September, the amount we're going to produce in September plus the amount we want in ending inventory. Okay, and now you might think we're, we're finished with that, but now we, this is what we need to produce. And if we were starting at ground zero, that would be the case. However, uh, we probably have some stuff in the warehouse already. So now that we know how many we want to produce if we had nothing, now we got to subtract out the stuff that's already in the warehouse. Now this number can be a little bit tricky. Notice I put the word in here, less beginning inventory. So this is the stuff that's already in the warehouse. It could be a little bit tricky to, to get some of those numbers depending how the problem is set up. We do note that like, if we skip over to August, we can see that well, um, if the ending inventory that we want to have is uh, 15,680 as of the end of July, then if it all accordance goes according to plan, then the beginning inventory for August will equal that number. So, so we know that that's going to be the case. Uh, if, if we're going to end with, with in July 15,680, then we're going to start in August with 15,680 according to the plan. And of course, if we're going to end in August with 16,080, uh, then we're going to begin in September with equals this 16,080. And so we have that. Now, of course, where are we going to get this beginning number? Because once again, we don't have the beginning information. They're going to have to provide that in, in some way. Uh, one way that it often will be provided in, in a lot of problems, obviously, if we could look at the budget from, from the prior period to, to see that or see the actual numbers. On the balance sheet, we can see here that we have finished goods of this 325,540 here. That's in dollars, however. So notice the balance sheet, of course, is in dollars. If we could divide that by the uh, cost per unit, then that should give us the, the number that we want here. So we could try that. And if we scroll down, we're going to say that the cost, production cost per unit is 1950 in dollars so we can we can calculate it in that way we can say well this is going to equal the finished goods of three two five five four zero divided by the cost nineteen dollars and fifty cents means that we have sixteen six ninety four here 
Also want to note that uh, there could be some rounding issues in these problems. So notice that this one I'm rounding to the dollar and it's really got some pennies in there. We are budgeting, however, therefore, you know, it's, it's an estimate anyway. So a, a dollar rounding is not going to affect the budget in a material way. For that reason, I don't think um, using uh, pennies is, is, is going to help us to make decisions that much. So we're, we're going to round it off, let Excel round it. Note that when you're using a calculation that has a rounded number in Excel, it does actually use the actual number being this number, this, this ratio, even though it's only showing a rounded number of 16,694. So always keep that in mind when you're working with Excel because that could drive you crazy if, if uh, the calculations are a little off and you're thinking, why is that? So now we're going to subtract this out. So now we have, this is how much we need to produce if we didn't have any on hand, but minus, we do have units on hand of this. Therefore, we only need to produce 19,586. We're going to do the same thing here. This equals the 35,680 we would need to produce in August if we didn't have any on hand, but we know that we're going to have 15,680 on hand, therefore we only have to produce 20,000 if everything goes according to plan. And then over here in September, we're going to say, well, this is 36,580 is how much we would have to produce if we didn't have any on hand, but we are planning to have 1680 on hand at the beginning of the month and therefore don't need to produce those. So this is going to be the units to be produced. And we could sum that up for the quarter. We could say this equals the sum of the units for July, August, and September would add up to the 60,086. Uh, so take a look at this calculation. You're going to see this a, a few different ways, a few different times. We're going to do the same thing when we start to calculate the materials. So whenever we think about how much we're going to need in terms of a budgeting stance, we're going to say, well, how, you know, how much are the sales going to be? We're going to need that. And then we're going to add to it how much we think ending inventory should be. How much of a cushion do we want? over the sales price or in the case of materials over the amount that we're going to use and if we add those two things up that will give us the amount that we would need to produce if we had nothing on hand as of the beginning of the period the month in this case and then we'll subtract out how much we actually do have on hand and that will give us the amount in this case that needs to be produced in the case of materials the, the amount that will need be to be purchased now that we know how many units we need to produce, we will then next time move on to uh, the raw materials budget. And of course, the raw materials budget, remember the units, the widgets that we're producing is going to be made up of raw materials. So if we're producing like guitars, then the guitar is a total thing. The raw material is like the wood and the glue and the whatever that are going to go into it. So now that we have the units that we need to produce in, to in total, now we got to think about, well, how much stuff do we need to purchase in terms of raw materials?